Hey everyone, I'm Dan Spada, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use Wondershare Demo Creator. Since the springtime, when many educators shifted to distance learning, teachers have been looking for ways to make their asynchronous lessons more engaging. One of the programs I've been using to create really engaging and interesting screencasts is Wondershare Demo Creator. So when the people from Wondershare Demo Creator reached out to me, I was more than happy to show a demo of how I've been using this program to create lessons and screencasts that are more than just a slideshow or just me sitting there talking. It has a really easy built-in feature that allows you to record and then also annotate, draw on the screen. And then there's a video editor that's also built in that makes it really quick and easy to create um, screencasts that look really professional and will grab the kids' interest throughout the presentation. So I'm gonna show you how to use this and how I've been using it. Uh, so once you open Wondershare Demo Creator, you can start a new recording by clicking on New Recording. And it does give you um, a user guide when you first go in. So it shows you that you can set the recording area. Uh, you can do screen drawings while you are actually creating your screencast by holding Shift, Control, and D. And you can do a spotlight. So if you press Shift, Control, and F, it allows you to just show part of the screen. So let's begin. So once Demo Creator is opened, you'll see there's a um, menu with different options right here. So you can decide whether you want full screen, you can create custom sizes, and again, you'll go into an editor after you're finished, so you can um, change that as well later on. But then over here on the right side, it has recording devices. So you can decide whether you want your webcam on and your microphone on. You can turn the webcam off so that it doesn't record uh, the webcam, it just records the screen, or you can have it so that it records the webcam. Now, some teachers like to see themselves on the screen while they're recording. Maybe you've got something in the background, um, or you just want to see what you know you look like while you're recording, but you don't actually have to see yourself for the software to record you. So if I click on this X, and I have the webcam still on here, it's going to record me while I'm recording the screen. So even though I can't see myself, the software will still record me and then I'll be able to edit that later. So let's leave that um, webcam on, but we'll leave it so that we don't see myself. So we'll click on the X. And then when we're ready, we can click on the record button to begin recording. Our software has started recording. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna minimize this because this is going to record anything on the screen. So you're gonna see my cursor moving, you're gonna see um, this toolbar at the top. Now let's click on present so that we can actually go through this like we are presenting our work. And let's go through these tools at the top here. So this is your spotlight tool. So if I wanted to draw the student's attention to something, all I have to do is select this and then left click and I can bring their attention to um, you know, whatever it is that I wanna highlight with the spotlight. I can also click on this pencil tool and it has different um, colors, different sizes, so you can decide how big or small you want the um, text to be. So I could write something like look, and again, if you have a stylus where you can write on the screen, it might look even better. Um, you can also highlight, so I can click on the highlighter and I can highlight certain words. I can also just use this to underline if I wanted to. There's a circle tool, so if I wanted to circle certain words, you know, I can circle them. I can also create a square, try to use different colors here. So we'll just square fake news. Um, if you wanted to draw arrows, so if I want to bring people's attention, so I have look, I can create an arrow that shows them something. I can also create lines. Um, we'll underline the word expert. And again, this will create a straight line. So no matter how big or small I make it, it will stay straight. Uh, and then at any point, if you need to undo, you can click on the undo button, or you can just clear the board at one time by clicking that and it erases everything. Now, if you want to stop um, or pause your recording, you can click pause and you'll notice my timer over here has stopped. 
So at this point, I'm not recording. I could stop. I could change things if I need to. I can go to different slides. And then I can click on play to resume recording. And you'll see my timer has started again. Um, I can delete what I've already done and re-record. So if I decide, ah, I don't like this, I want to start over, I can click delete and re-record, or I can click on the stop button when I'm done to end the recording. So let's just stop now so I can show you what happens when you're finished screencasting. So we'll go to end recording. And now it'll take a minute or so to import the media files and open up the video editor. So this will allow us to make additional changes to what we've just created. So if you've ever used any kind of editing software, you'll see this is a very similar um, interface. It's drag and drop and extremely user friendly. I'll go through some of these main tools with you, um, but I'll show you first that you do have three tracks. So you've got your screencast here on the bottom, and then you've got the webcam, which was recording, as I said, even though you didn't see yourself, it was still recording you and then you've got your audio. So we can make changes to any one of these three things. Um, let's start by looking at ourselves. So if you decided after watching this that nah, you actually don't wanna see yourself, you can simply click on the eyeball and then it just erases that or hides that track so that you don't see yourself. If you look at that and you say, oh, I wish I was in there bigger or I wish it was smaller or in a different place, you can simply click on it and then you can move. So if you decide you want yourself at the bottom or you wanna make it smaller, you can just shrink that down and you can put that anywhere that you'd like. So you can take the audio and you can either increase it or decrease it when you play it back to hear how you actually sound. Um, you know, maybe it was too loud, maybe it was too soft, and you can make those adjustments right in here, which is really nice and a feature that a lot of screencasters don't have. Um, you can also speed it up um, or you can slow it down if you need to make adjustments as well. Now let's take a look at some of the options on the left side here because there's lots of really cool um, text tools that include, uh, you know, like lower thirds that include intro screens. So if you decided you wanted like a fancy opener, all you have to do is click on, uh, let's click on this one here. Um, click on that, drag it down, and you'll see it created like another track. And then I can just simply click and create different text. So I could call this um, demo creator. Now you'll notice that the text itself is kind of hard to see. Uh, so all you have to do on the right side is you can change the font. You can change the color. So we'll just make this like a darker thing so it really stands out. There's a text border that also you can enable. So notice that, see how um, there's like a border around the letters. So if I wanted to make this something darker, now it really kind of pops on the screen. And it actually would allow me to go with something lighter. So if I wanted something that, you know, is a lighter color with the black border, it makes it really stick out. So now let's come back over here to see what that looks like. So if I wanted a little intro, and now I play, and so now our you'll see I've got the nice little intro, and it goes right in front of, uh, right over the text. Now, if you wanted to put that before your text, or before your screencast, you can simply drag and drop that down into your timeline, and now, instead of it being over the screencast, it's going to be before the screencast. So you've got a little intro. Uh, the one thing I have to do is move the audio so it matches up. But this is what it looks like now. So now I've got a nice intro to my screencast. Looks very professional. And, so now, and then you'll see my screencast as well. So let's stop that. And again, you can do that with any of them. They have credits at the end. Um, at any point, if you want to put a lower third graphic to you know, introduce a different concept or bring something else to um, attention, you can do that. And just like with the other stuff, you can move that around so that you can write something. Um, and just like before, you can make a text border so that it really stands out. And that, um, and then again, you can move it 
You can make it bigger or smaller. If you want to increase the font size, you can do that as well. Um, so there's lots of different options as you're going through and editing your screencast. A couple more things that I'll point out to you is if you didn't want to use a lower third graphic, there are dialog boxes. So I can add in a dialog box. And again, you can drag and you can make um, different tracks or you can lay it on the same track. So let's put this here and I could put something like check this out and it'll resize it automatically. Um, and again, you can go through and you can change any of the options. We're just going to leave it like this for now. So I can show you, you know, as I'm doing the screencast, I could put a little dialog box just to make it, you know, really engaging and keep the kids interested throughout. There's also stickers. Uh, and again, depending on what age student you're working with, there's all different kinds of like things you can put in just to keep it engaging and interesting. You know, you can put in like a little Pac-Man thing. There are animated effects. Uh, so if I wanted to put in like a little fireworks, I can do that as well. Or the different emojis. So there's lots of different options that you can play around with. But it is just simply clicking and dragging. But you'll see that this is something that will give your screencast a very unique feel that uh, students aren't used to. And it will also make it so that, you know, they're enjoying it as well because these are fun little things you can do. There are different transitions. So what we'll do is we'll split one of our clips. Let's just split it here. So if I click on the screen and right click, I can go to split and you'll see it literally splits my um, screen into two so that now th instead of having one long file, I have uh, two smaller ones. So I can go and let's, uh, let's click one of these. Let's do swirl. That looks fun. So we'll click our swirl transition. So now let's just see what that looks like. You'll see it's a fun little transition in between. And you can click any one. Now again, because I've got the same uh, file here, some of them won't look as good. But like, let's put the cube one in. We can just click and drag it over. And you'll see what that looks like. So you'll see it does like a 3D transition. Now there are other effects you can use as well. So let's click on effects. So you can use the green screen tool. Now I happen to use a green screen because I do a lot of videos. Um, so if I want to take the green screen effect, I can just click and drag that down onto my um, video track that has the green screen. And you'll see right away, it kind of eliminates it. And then you can play with some of these tools here to make sure it's nice and clean. Went a little too far there. Uh, but now you'll see I can move myself around and you don't see the green screen. Um, and it just allows me to be able to see more of what's behind my shoulders. And you'll see right behind. Now you can, if you wanted to get fancy and put some different kind of background down, you would just add in any kind of background. Now, the way the tracks work is it's like layers. So you'll notice that the camera, my webcam is above the background. If I had that switched and I had the background above my camera, I wouldn't see myself. So you, if you're going to use the green screen, you need to put whatever your chroma keying or green screen on top and then whatever you want the background to be on the bottom. And there are other effects too, like cinema and mosaic. Uh, this option down here allows you to um, do cursor highlights, click rings, and click sounds. So you can change those, um, you know, in your editing afterwards. To finish, once you're done, you can go up to export to create the video. Now, again, it is important that you do save your project as you're working on it. Um, you can also, uh, and this is something that I didn't show you before, but import your own media files. So if there were pictures or videos that you wanted to add into your screencast afterwards, you can simply just click import media files and it will show up in your media folder like this. And then you would just click and drag them down as well. When we're done, we can click export. Um, or we can just click export over here and you can decide what format you want to um, export in. You can decide uh, all different types of options down here, like the resolution. 
frame rates, um, some audio options. Um, and you can upload directly to YouTube. So if you sign in with a YouTube account, um, you can add in your description, your tags, just like you would on YouTube and click export and it will export directly to YouTube. So while there are lots of different programs out there that will allow you to do screencasts, Wondershare Demo Creator is my favorite and the one I've been using since the springtime. Now I get approached by lots of companies asking me to do sponsored videos and I turn down a lot of companies. I only make videos for programs and softwares that I truly believe in and because I've seen the results from Wondershare Demo Creator with my own students, I was excited to make this video. One of the things that I really like about it is even though I have other editing softwares, I like the fact that when I'm trying to make a quick screencast or lesson for my kids, I can create the video and then hop right into the editing software so that I don't have to waste a lot of time uploading and you know just moving files around. And it has all those built-in effects that allow me to create really fun and engaging videos that make my lesson stand out from the other stuff that they're seeing throughout the day. Now, if you're using Wondershare Demo Creator, please let me know how you're using it in the comments below and let me know what your students think about it. And if you know of any teachers that could benefit from watching this, please feel free to share it with them. And again, if you need any extra help, please check the description below where there are uh, links to official guides and tutorials. And if you haven't already, please take a second, click on the subscribe button for the EdTech Show, and then click on that little notification bell so that you get notified every time there's a new video. And if you haven't already, please follow me on Twitter at Dan Spada. And you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash the EdTech Show. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.